Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Tuesday, January 24th, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. The doomsday clock moves to 90 seconds to midnight, signaling more peril than ever. But the big story, a rare tornado emergency was issued Tuesday afternoon as severe storms roared through Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. Keep calm. It's boom time. It's true, kids. A rare tornado emergency ripped through Texas, and we showed you some of that footage. Seems to be some power lines down there, but... This is an ongoing severe weather threat for the southeast, which will extend through tomorrow. Right now, strong winds are reported around New Orleans, and this is just a few minutes ago. Storms begin to track to Louisiana as well as power outages topped 100,000 in Texas just a few hours ago. Now, severe thunderstorms are possible, and tornadoes could hit the Gulf Coast overnight as well. And there is some severe weather watches and warnings. Let's take a look at the power outages in Texas now, just at 83,000 or so, but this could go up. So let's take a moment and wait for the full forecast. Heavy snow is coming Wednesday afternoon, followed by rain into Thursday for Boston. How much snow did you get in Maine? Well, it was quite insane. It's a tons of areas got a foot or more. Take a look at... Androscoggin County, most of the areas there, 12 to 13 inches. Cumberland County, it's looking like a foot on average. Look at this, some areas with 15.5 inches. So a heavy swath of snow. Take a look at that 14.5 in Litchfield, Kennebec County. A foot and a half an inch in Windsor and Lincoln County. A foot in Norway in Oxford County. Almost a foot in Topsham 17 in Pittsfield. Who knew? Now you do. Here is that epic snowfall analysis for the last 48 hours, showing a huge swath of snow moving through much of central New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and southern Maine. It's insane. But the forecast coming for Maine over the next 15 days is more insane than that. Three to four feet for the entire state. Now storm-weary south is targeted by more severe weather. As tornado-ravaged areas continue to recover from recent storms, including Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, a rare offshore storm. Warning has been issued. Sorry about that. I'm trying to turn on my camera. There I am, looking beautiful as ever. Albeit a little washed out. Let's try to fix that. There we go. All right. So as tornado-ravaged areas continue to recover from recent storms, a rare offshore storm warning has been issued, indicating winds could surpass 70 miles per hour and waves could reach 11 feet on the Gulf Coast. The coast with the most to lose tomorrow. Powerful winter storm moving through the southern and eastern U.S. A powerful winter storm will cross the southern U.S. today, then shift into the northeast U.S. by Wednesday night. Heavy snow and pockets of ice are forecast along the north of the storm's track, where winter weather watches, warnings, and advisories have been issued. In the south, heavy to possibly excessive rain may cause flooding, and severe thunderstorms may bring strong risks of tornadoes to many regions. So keep close to your, well news channels for any updates and if there is a tornado warning get out of harm's way for goodness sakes now let's take a look at the snowfall forecast for the country here is wednesday through thursday and you can see that system moving up into the northeast it's going to move through the central plains it's going to Come out of Oklahoma in the morning and then hit Arkansas and southern Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio through midday. Wednesday night, you should see the snow on the ground, Ohio. Northwest Ohio is going to be picking up the most snow there, 10 to 12 inches probably locally. And then the snow is going to move up through the central Appalachians into Pennsylvania Wednesday, Thursday night, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. And then by Thursday morning into the afternoon, you're going to be picking up more snow. This time in northern Maine, it's insane. So the other half of the state will be buried in the global warming goodness. As systems move th down into the west through the weekend, setting up more systems for the northeast to bring more and more snow <laughs> to Maine, it's insane. And several nor'easters will pile one on top of the other through the first week of February. 
bringing much needed heavy moisture to the northeast like a beast. Now, typically, when we see a system uh, lining up like this, we should expect some early March blizzards for Philadelphia, Boston, and New York City. So we're just getting started with the winter, and it is tilting the scale. Seismic update, no quakes of note. We had an aftershock 6.4 in Argentina. This is after the 6.8 just about four days ago in the same exact spot. So very little effect because it's at such a depth, 601 kilometers. Another quake out here in Malta, 5.3 was not on land. So nobody felt that baby. So really no action worldwide of any significance. As well as volcanoes, all is quiet on the volcano front. We've got Fuego, Popo, Semaru, and a few others coming in here, Shivalush, but nothing spectacular, including Krakatoa or Krakatau. So let's hop over to Space Weather News Update, where we can see the last 48 hours are quite boring. We are supposed to be in solar max now, and we are in fact in solar quacks. Nothing is happening, and the latest disk is showing that large sunspot moving away from Earth and out of the picture, and it's looking quite pathetic on the solar disk. Now, some interesting solar weather here. Extremely close asteroid flyby. There is no danger of a collision, but newly discovered asteroid 2023 BU will make an extremely close approach to Earth this Thursday. On January 26th at 2117 UTC, that's 1617 Eastern or 417 Eastern time. The five meter wide space rock will just be 3,500 kilometers above South America. That is a close approach. In fact, the closest approach I've ever heard of. Well within our planet's belt of geosynchronous satellites. So will, be, will there be some interesting fireworks? It's anyone's guess. There is no way to know. But Europe's virtual telescope project will live stream the flyby on Thursday. So if you click on this link, and we'll, we'll supply you both of the links, the Virtual Telescope Project 2.0 will live stream the near-Earth asteroid 2023 BU, extremely close encounter, just 3,500 kilometers from Earth. That is, well, that is basically tippy touch. All the links will be below. 600 square mile iceberg, roughly the size of two New York City cities. Two New York cities. Whew. Say that five times fast. It breaks off of the Antarctic ice shelf and it, well, just gives opportunity for Fearmonger and the lamestream media to report on it. This has happened before and it will happen again. It's the, the whole process of how ice sheets work. They grow out into the ocean, they get too big, and they crack off and they float out and they melt. This has been going on for millions, if not hundreds of millions of years, and no one gets it. Now, here's some interesting news. A man vanishes while on a walk. This piqued my attention. This happened in Wyoming. His dog was found alone on a leash, and then they went for a search. And unfortunately, they found a hole in the ice. And this ice is on a very fast-moving river. Deputies learned the 60-year-old Casper man told his friends and family he was going for a walk, something he often did. His cell phone records show where he was in the area on the afternoon of the 19th, but it has since gone dead. And they do not expect foul play. In fact, the deputies found a hole in the ice with exposed water at a river near Campbell's car and are investigating if he possibly fell through. Now, the investigation lasted for days and extended for miles, but this is a fast-moving river, and they'll probably won't find him until the spring thaw. So the moral of the story is don't go on a hike alone and walk on ice alone because you never know what can happen. SpaceX completes major Starship test in prep for the rocket's first orbital launch attempt, which will lead to the second peopling of the moon in decades. SpaceX announced on Monday it completed a major test of its latest Starship prototype, which is massive. 
The Starship Prototype 24 stacked on Super Heavy Booster Prototype 7 was fueled up at SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas in a test known as a wet dress rehearsal. Now what they do here is just fill it up with the fuel that they're going to be using to test whether or not the object can sustain the fuel and not explode before liftoff. And in fact, it did not blow up. And so we are just days, weeks, or months away from the first launch of this Starship Prototype 24, which will do its first orbit test in an undisclosed date because they didn't disclose it here. Now, this was the first time an integrated ship and booster were fully loaded with more than 10 million pounds of propellant, explosive propellant, and nothing went boom, thankfully. And here we can see some footage of that wet test. They simply pump the millions of pounds of propellant in as if they were about to go to the next step. And then they remove it because it's worth a lot of money. <laughs> now, what's interesting about this rocket is it has 32 jet engines. That is fantastic. And that will be the next step. SpaceX has a few more steps remaining before the Starship can launch, including a planned test firing of all 33 engines at the base of the Super Heavy rocket booster and that will make for some spectacular footage which we will share with you here as soon as it occurs now an interesting new paper that had recently be brought, been brought to my attention i think is worth sharing tonight with you guys because it's easy to understand and it is great information to share with the alarmists that are maybe friends or foes the paper was published 13th of July, 2022 in Climate and As Atmospheric Science Journal. It's called Coupled Stratospheric Tropospheric Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation and its Importance for Near Future Climate Projection. And this is one of the few papers published in the year 2022 that discusses exclusively natural climate variability and the fact that these oscillations are the number one driver of climate on the planet. Now, if you've been with the channel for eight years, you've heard us talk about the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation as well as the PDO, which is the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, um, and all of the ENSO cycles, like La Nina and El Nino. And so this is a great expose on some of the modeling they've done on what future predictions will be. Now, this is some of the most high-resolution data sets we have on natural climate variability in the recent past, meaning the last century. And what they are predicting is a cold phase starting now, which continues here. The Atlantic multidecadal variability is going to be dropping off through 2038 before it recovers. So we have a cooling period from now through 2040. And the North Atlantic Oscillation is showing a cooling period past 2040. So a continuous drop down on the multi-decadal oscillations, uh, including the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation here in both data sets until 2040. Here we can see the estimated sea ice concentrations through 2040 increasing exponentially and rapidly. So sea ice concentrations are predicted to increase from this point moving forward. You can see the several year increase that we've been reporting on as the fear mongers lose their space. And just like we have predicted, according to the models and after the recent years of increased sea ice, it's looking like it's going to continue through the projection through 2050. So sea ice is going to continue to build for decades to come. Now the Eurasian surface temperature and the global mean surface temperature seem to stagnate. They don't show very, almost any warning, warming at all, but these people are still using CIMP6 and 5 models, which employ the global warming model. So you're definitely going to get an uptick in temperatures, which are shown here. But what they also show is cooling in the AMO the North Atlantic Oscillation, and a massive increase in sea ice. 
And that comes from mainstream science. So good news is that not everyone is part of the 96% consensus. Now this asteroid has survived for 4 billion years. That could be a huge problem, according to these scientists. In, in fact, it's because of the type of asteroid it is. Do you see the conglomeration of parts on here? Yeah, that's the dangerous asteroid. Sneaky and abundant rubble piles. The rubble pile asteroid. And here we're looking at Itokawa, one of those rubble pile asteroids. And they all tend to have a barbell shape. They've been spinning around for such a long time, they've been electrically scarred and scoured to form this kind of dipole dog bone shape. And they're very hard. Indeed. Um, in fact, NASA's DART mission smashed into one of them. Now, in 2010, the Hayabusa spacecraft designed by J JAXA returned from the 535-meter-long peanut-shaped asteroid Otokawa, which we showed you here. And the probe bought, brought back it with more than just 1,000 particles of rock, each one smaller than a grain of sand. Now, this was the experiment where the, they had a, a small satellite that launched from a satellite that landed on an asteroid Boom! Grabbed the sample and then shot back off. And isn't that amazing? And now we're going to have those results. Early results from the team at JAXA who analyzed the return sample showed Otokawa formed after complete destruction of a parent asteroid, which was 20 kilometers large, and then recoalesced into an even harder body. And so... These babies, if they were to hit Earth, could be a problem. Not only that, they could be a problem if you want to break them up because it might be very hard to do. So the whole Bruce Willis narrative of people going up and landing on an asteroid to save the planet may be further away than we once thought. Now the doomsday clock, speaking of which, <laughs> the doomsday clock moves to 90 seconds to midnight. Now no one ever thought it would get this close. But it has, signaling more peril than ever. The world is closer to catastrophe than ever. The doomsday clock, the metaphorical measure of challenges to humanity, was reset just recently to 90 seconds before midnight on Tuesday. That was our lose day. That's today. And previously, it was just 100 seconds before midnight. Now, the Science and Security Board of the Bulletin of the Atomic scientists said the move, the closest to widespread calamity humanity has ever been judged to be, was largely, though not exclusively, due to the Ukraine war. Goddamn warmongers. The scientific body evaluates the clock each January. This is the first full update since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine beginning last February, triggering a war in Europe and a new flood of refugees. The clock created a stir when it was set to 100 seconds to midnight in 2020. And that's not funny. The first time the famous clock had gone down to seconds rather than minutes. At the time, the bulletin scientists said we were at doom's doorstep. So where are we now? Doom's doorstep step? Steppity step? Well, it's anyone's guess. The whole thing is a made-up bunch of gobbledygook from fear mongers and globalists that control the narrative. And I don't buy a good piece of it. If you want to know some real information, I'll supply you with the PDF to this amazing paper, The Secrets of the Small Shafts of the Pyramid of Cheops, because I'm sure you've been looking for it. This is the full... No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. It's the full PDF about the history... You know those tiny little shafts that shoot up out of the Great Pyramid that point into space where people think that they're used for astronomical observatories and such? Well, does anyone's guess what these fucking things were used for? And that's why we're here, to get to the bottom of it. And that's boom, the knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I hope you got something out of the video. Had a great time giving you all the news. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We need you. We love you. Be safe. And that is a boo. Mm.